All right. And I am here with the Active Campaign Marketplace Maven, aka manager, aka Mr. Cody Lindley, uh, the recipe wizard himself, for a new installment of Automate That, the Active Campaign Recipe Show. Cody, good to see you, my friend. Good to see you too, Ernie. Very excited. As you can see here, um, we are very excited to uh, show you what Cody has been cooking up in the Active Campaign Marketplace with the Automation Recipes of the Week, a special installment. Uh, Cody, I was speaking with Finch earlier today about Scofflaw, um, mm -hmm. and she was letting me know about an automation that she's using with her business that is really working for her, and then one automation that she was looking to incorporate in her business um, that she thinks would be working really well for her. So. Um, Let's kind of get into these and, and show everyone how you might actually accomplish both of these things by using active campaign automation. I'd love that. All right. So without further ado, first recipe reveal, and this is the one that Finch had mentioned she was using. Cody, what are we looking at here? We're looking at the abandoned cart reminder. Uh, as you can see to the right, that image, it's a simple yet powerful automation where we're going to, someone's gonna abandon a cart, we're gonna wait, that wait step's customizable. We see if they recovered the cart and if they didn't, we're gonna send them a little email asking them, hey, don't forget about this. Over here on the back of the baseball stats, we got industry, e-commerce and retail. Though now if you have a digital storefront at all, we it's almost an any right now with how uh, so many businesses have di uh, pivoted to digital. Features uh, are native um, abandoned cart functionality and email. Use case, sales, experience level, growth. Doesn't mean it's difficult to set up. You just need to also set up your e-commerce integration. So we wanted to denote that. And stage of the customer journey, convert and close. Love it. Yes. As you can see here in this image uh, of the actual automation, it's not too big, not too complicated at all. Um, and Finch had let us know that it had some really significant results for Scofflaw. Um, and I actually read a stat that in 2017, approximately 77% of carts were abandoned on e-commerce platforms. That is like, that's three fourths. That's over three fourths. If you have an eight slice pizza, that's six slices. That's ridiculous. All right. So, I mean, obviously we get to win back some lost sales, but what other benefits do we get from the, uh, the abandoned cart automation? Of course, Ernie, as you just said, we cannot overstate, you'll just win back those lost sales by just doing, you don't have to do a crazy offer. You don't have to say, buy it right now or it won't be there. A lot of times you just have to do a gentle reminder and you'll see significant uh, increases. Also, because some more holistic things that we like to look at with this is you can track your win back rate with your current marketing efforts. You can, you know, A-B test this. Look at, should it be a more transactional email? Should it follow your marketing voice that they might be seeing through your other emails? And of course, the last part here is gain valuable data on your sales process and how many contacts abandoned cart. As we've hmm. shown, statistics might be high. Maybe there's information that they're having to go back to the product page for, and then they never come back. Maybe we can start pulling that in. The data you'll get here when you start digitally listening to your customers is going to be huge. Yes, I love I love those the the second and the third point. Obviously, there's a lot to love with the first point too. You know who doesn't who doesn't love more sales, more customers? But as we've talked about um, throughout this episode, you know, working across your your marketing software and really listening and having them all work in concert with each other to create that seamless experience, you know, taking information from one platform, getting it into another one where you can use it and send out communications is just super valuable. Uh, and you can't, yeah, really, really can't overstate any of these, uh, the importance of any of these points. So if we're going to the automation store, and we've got our, our cart, pun intended, loaded up, um, what, what ingredients are we putting in here? We're just grabbing four simple things, an abandoned cart trigger, or if you're not using our Shopify or WooCommerce integration, you can use a site tracking to track a checkout page or look at a third party like Zapier. So that may affect your trigger here. But for our example, abandoned cart trigger, a customizable wait step for as long as you want, an if else action, checking for if that cart has been abandoned. Again, if you're not using Shopify or WooCommerce, you can use the actual like order complete page URL. That's another one a lot of people like to use. And then the send email action, which is the, hey, you forgot this. Yeah, I mean, four, four items here that is going to, you know, potentially result in hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in, in one back customers. Um, okay, so we get all the ingredients home. We've got them out on the counter. We're getting ready to start cooking. Mise en place. What do we got to do before we start? 
Yeah. So first and foremost, you want to set up whatever your e-commerce integration is and how that data flow is before we get into the automation recipe itself. Uh, one other little tip here, familiarize yourself with the Shopify campaign block. It is a Shopify block that we have in automations where you can show off some products from a collection. It's huge. It's just a little tip I want to drop in here if you are using Shopify. And then three, kind of that process before uh, paper, determine how long you want to wait before reaching out about the abandoned cart. Because then you'll kind of have that great idea of like, well, we really want to give them a, a couple hours or we want to give them a day and then gently remind them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's going to differ from from business to business, from industry to industry. Um, you know, think about it from your customer's perspective, what makes the most sense for them. You know, maybe it is a couple of hours, maybe it's a couple of days, or you could try both and see which one works better. Um, okay, so we've got it all assembled here. We've got all of our ducks in a row and uh, take us through the journey. What are we looking at? Yeah, so we're going to enter the automation when a contact abandons the the cart. Um, then we're going to wait for a day. Again, that's just an example. Feel free to adjust that to what you want. Uh, we're going to see, hey, did they recover the cart? If so, we're not going to send anything. That's great. But if they haven't, we're going to send that abandoned cart reminder and just uh, either do an offer, do however you want, or just say, hey, you forgot these. Hey, Cody. And then, of course, obviously, if you oh. want to build out more messaging, so sorry, Ernie, uh, we could have other messages and other if else actions built out. I just wanted to point out the customization of this. Once it's in your account, like all automation recipes, the record is yours. Do with it what you will. You I'm honestly, sorry, Ernie, what did I cut you? Was that what you were going to say? That was the question I was going to ask. It was almost as if you were in my brain. Uh, that was wild. Well done. Okay. So <laughs> that takes care of the abandoned cart recipe. Uh, moving into that second use case, Finch had mentioned that she wanted to start doing more with segmentation and personalization specifically by gathering information about which pages or which interests her customers or potential customers have. Do we have anything in the marketplace that might achieve that goal? Oh, we sure do. I think we can help Finch and some others out. Next slide, please, Ernie. Ah, all right, Cody, what are we looking at? So we're looking at the targeted product interest follow-up. So what this automation does is when we know someone is tagged interested in a product, you can see our example tag up there, Product one, you can do it with specific products if you only offer a few things or categories if you're like an instrument shop, uh, guitars would be one. Uh, the industry, as we look over here at the back of the baseball card stats, again, e-commerce retail, but truly could be any, especially with so many digital businesses nowadays. Features, uh, email, it's gonna be a drip series with information about the product they've expressed interest in. Goals, which we'll go over in a second. And tagging, which is gonna be that trigger. Uh, the use case is going to be with sales, experience level starter. We actually don't 100% uh, need an integration with this, so you can get it up and running. And stage of the customer journey, convert and close. Yeah, so one thing I love that you said here was that, you know, the industry e-commerce retail we have listed here, but um, that's not to say that every other, other industry could benefit from this. You know, this is going to be a way, again, to digitally listen to what your customers, not, not what they're saying, but what they're doing, right? You're, you're mm -hmm. tracking their behavior, their actions, the pages that they're looking at or the things that they're clicking on in your website and then using that to tag them as interested in particular areas of your business. Um, so yeah, definitely don't have to be an e-commerce business to, uh, to find some value in this one. Um, and, and what other benefits are we, uh, we gonna get here? Yeah, so one of the big benefits, we're gonna kind of hit on this in both the first two points is you're gonna be following up your contacts with information you know they want which is great. Um, we're gonna talk about another recipe this works great with in tandem, uh, but it's the one that identifies and puts the tag on there. Our example just uses site tracking. So if you go to a certain page enough, you're clearly considering it. Let's tell you about the thing you're making a decision on. Um, second, we're gonna increase sales. It goes hand in hand with that first place by marketing the product your contact wants. If I sold five things and you're only interested in one, if I talk about all five, that's a lot of wasted energy and effort on both. But if I talk about the one I know you want, we're much more likely to make a deal. And of course, it can't be understated. Uh, run a dedicated, informative email trip. This is a great way. There's so many different contents. Maybe you offer a coupon. Maybe you have a blog post, some customer te testimony. This is just giving really good information to your people. Not everything has to be a hard CTA in every email. You're just providing that information to let them make the informed choice. 
Right. And, and, you know, depending on your business, depending on your use case or where your customers are at, what your sales cycle looks like, you know, this information might not be particularly actionable in the immediate term, but you are just getting information about what they're interested in, or you're getting information about your most popular products, your most popular service offerings. Uh, and you can use that information to, you know, adjust your, your ad spend, adjust your messaging, or even, you know, your overall process in terms of what you are pushing um, or marketing. And, and another thing here that I just love is, is, you know, again, working across the different pieces of marketing software, whether it's your website provider, your e-commerce store, you know, whatever the case may be, um, listening to what people are looking at. I know that sounds counterintuitive listening to what people are looking at, but really it is, you know, taking advantage of the, uh, the data that you have access to and then using it to your benefit. Uh, so again, we're at the automation store. What's going, what's going in the cart here? So we've stocked up and saved again, just four different things, but with wait steps and send email action, we got a couple. One is a tag added trigger. Uh, next, we're going to have six wait steps. Then we're going to have five send email actions and one goal step. All right. A baker's dozen of automation features here. A little buy one, get one action. We get them all home, got them on the counter in the kitchen. We're ready to go. Mise en place. Ready to go. So uh, again, here's a link in the product interest tagging is the automation recipe we recommend. It does, uh, hey, have they visited this website, which is the product page? Have they visited a certain amount of times? Let's tag them as interested. It's a great way to just build that out for different products you have, different areas of your site. It can let you know if someone might need support. It's really helpful with a lot of things. Uh, but if you already use a different uh, system, we're talking about different softwares today, and that via Zapier or via a developer on your team already is being encoded in a custom field or a tag, go ahead and don't do that double work. Just set that up as the way to figure out when people are interested. So again, a bit of in the platform, a bit of out of the platform, depending on how you do it, but get that set up. Um, set up the Shopify or e-commerce integration while not necessarily needed. The goal step is so much more effective. It'll be checking for a purchase made if we don't have to look for a site page of uh, checkout completed, if we can just say, we know that it was a recorded purchase, that goal will work so much better. And then of course, last but not least, determine the offers and content you want in the emails. Again, uh, we have some message names we're gonna see here in just a second, but those are examples that we put together. You might want to focus solely on blog posts, thought leadership, what experts are saying about your product, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And again, process before software, just just get into the shoes of your customers, your your potential customers, um, and really think about what that ideal seamless experience is going to look like, um, you know, whether it's looking at a page three times or five times or clicking on a link, um, just kind of go through that journey in your own head, you know, what would warrant uh, a tag of being interested in a particular product or area. Um, okay, so we got a little bit of a longer journey to go on here. But uh, starting at the top, where, where are we headed? Yeah. Uh, so again, it's going to be kicked off by that tag interested in product one. That's just an example. Again, you'll build it out for different products or category of products. After a short wait, uh, we're going to send out our first email. As you can see here, it's just a small coupon for product one. But again, it can be just information. Uh, we're then going to go through a uh, wait, send email step about four more times. That is completely customizable. We put some really generous wait steps there because we know they're also getting marketing emails potentially. They're also getting transactional emails. So we don't want to overstuff that inbox, but it can definitely be an email a day if you want it to be. You know your marketing and your audience better than us. So we can actually go to the next page, Ernie. All right. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, as you see here, we get that third email, another wait, four, another wait, and then that fifth final email. You can build out more if you want. That's just an example number. Then we hold them at the last step for a couple of days, and there's that goal step that purchased is made. Now, why do we have it there? Because at any point during this trip, if product one or whatever your product one is, is purchased, we don't want to keep saying it'd be a great thing to buy. So we take that goal, takes the contact pulls them all the way to the bottom and lets them leave. That way you're not just, cause you know, that would be a great response if you're like, please buy product one. And someone's like, I, I already did. So we make sure we're again, digitally listening, a huge theme of today with your marketing software, really think about the capabilities it lets you do. Yeah. The capabilities and, and how you can provide that, that best experience possible um, within the capabilities of your software. Just love the fact, you know, we've got different varying 
uh, durations between these emails. Like you said, you don't want to, you don't want to be the only name in the inbox. You don't want to be hitting them up every 12 hours about this product. And you also don't want to be trying to sell them something you've already sold them. Um, so perfect. Cody, thank you so much for a glimpse into, uh, the recipes we've got in the marketplace, um, and showing us exactly how to accomplish the things that, uh, Finch had kind of laid out in that last part. Um, always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. And that's that automated. See you next time. See you next time.